To be born English is to win a uh, first prize in the lottery of life. That's what uh, Cecil John Rhodes said. Personally, I wish we had uh, the privilege to set up such a system for my race. We all must bow down our heads in shame, for indeed we have lost it. Now, nah, our ancestors have not bequeathed such a privilege of, uh, to us. Today, we want to deal with the men who rules the world uh, today. This is what Sister John Rhodes was able to establish for his descendants. All these shaded in red uh, grew up under his influence. He was a businessman, a politician, and a very smart man. How many businessmen and billionaires do we have today who could assist us in doing that? It is essential to repeat a few effects are from evidence to which attention has already been called, but which uh, heretofore have not uh, been correctly interpreted in their relation to the uh, great scheme that runs this earth. It is necessary uh, to revive the memory of a certain will left by the late S. John Rhodes, drawn up in 1877 and known as the secret will of Cecil John Rhodes in its main uh, provisions sets forth its purpose it has power but before we look at that we want to at least uh, say a few things uh, concerning uh, this, uh, John Rhodes Rhodes was an imperialist a colonizer and a racist but very brilliant we see him here exploiting the whole of Africa no two ways about we see again his mercenaries here attacking and destroying the Ndebele warriors uh, Rhodes mercenaries were in possession of the latest technology and skills and uh, with that they were able to vanquish the impies and they uh, brutally killed them and destroyed and slaughtered our own people to take over the whole of uh, southern Africa but even so to our utter shock when Rhodes died in his will he decided above everything else to be buried at one of the most important shrines or places that you can ever find on the earth and the very holy site in southern africa place known as malinda zimu today known as matopo hills where they are the footsteps of mabgadziba the hill was referred to uh, by Rhodes as a place where one could get a view of the whole world but the area has long been held sacred. It was known as Malindazimu, a place of the spirits by the Karanga before they were conquered by the Ndebele around 1840. The Matebele or Ndebele, however, continued with the practice of holding this place sacred until it was adopted by the regime, the white regime, when the country became known as Rhodesia. You can see that here there is uh, one of our own guarding the place and the visitors they have come to see the place. Senkomo, the chief who was third in the procession during the day he was uh, buried, expressed his feelings uh, this way. He said the bodies of Umzlikazi, the great chief, and of the great white chief, he said, now both rest in the Matopos. Their spirits will range the mountains and they will meet and hold a great Indaba. <laughs> This is very shocking. It's coming from our own Bantu leader. Take notice of what happens here. And why would we allow this to happen right in our place? There, he has locked that place and now this whole Malinda Zim is owned by those that are associated with the belief and the spirituality of Cecil John Rhodes. His will still rules Zimbabwe today. And perhaps his will is still running the whole earth today. Because uh, Colonel Sister John Rhodes, his brother, when he was speaking during the burial of Rhodes, said that, I know the white men and the Matebele will be brothers and friends forever. I leave my brother's grave in your hands. I charge you to hand down this sacred trust to your sons that come after you from generation to generation and i know if you do this my brother will be pleased amongst the mourners who were there was majuba a son of 
King Lobengula, who was educated at the expense of the deceased statesman. So Majuba received the Rhodes Scholarship and was educated and sent to university and wherever he was sent by Cecil John Rhodes. Just think about that, digest that. There were also natives at the burial of Cecil John Rhodes. And at a signal from their chiefs, the EPs and the former warriors stood up as one. And for a second time, thrilled the whole peop uh, group of people that were there with their deep melancholy farewell and cry as they wailed their royal salute. Nkosi! And all this was done and it continues today. When confronted about the exhuming of Cecil John Rhodes from Matopos, the government led by the then President Robert Mugabe refused and threatened the war veterans that had gone there with that idea at the Victoria Falls uh, ZANU PF uh, conference. Mugabe said, we won't dig up roads. You can read this from this website, Nehanda Radio. Roads burial is it meant to achieve other goals. Sell out chiefs, sell out natives had given him all the information about this portal, which is the only reserved for Bantus. When he called it Worldview Center, he really meant it. Here are some of the natives and our own people that were waiting for all this coffin at Matopos. Look at that. Just have a look at that. Take your time. You can go to uh, the rhodesia.me.uk and you'll find a lot of information about that. Rhodes also had uh, international influence. There is more to Rhodes than just the, his business acumenship and political ambitions. Among his personal beliefs, Rhodes endorsed the idea of superiority he attributed to the Anglo-Saxons, whom he called the first race in the world, in his will. And you can see from this uh, post that Cecil John Rhodes was a brooding imperialist with a 200-year manifesto to control the world through federal socialist corporatism via a new religion of British tail male inheritance. He copied the Jesuits' secrecy and the resource-stripping methods of the British East India Company uh, to found uh, the De Beers uh, monopoly with Rothschild's bank funds. So we know who was behind Rhodes financially. His great-uncle John Masterman had been a director in uh, Bake and was a City of London MP with Baron Lionel Nathan Rothschild, 1841-1857. Rhodes recast his will in July 1899 from spending 100% on manifesto propaganda to doling out scholarship to British Dominion American teenagers for grooming into his ideology for world control. A task over which Parliament took control in 1916. His first trustees included Lord Alfred Milner and Rothschilds by marriage. The seizure of wealth is necessary from a Rhodes Manifesto. His will's main provision set forth its purpose of establishing and promotion of a secret society. The true aim of which and object whereof shall be the extension of British rule throughout the world and especially the ultimate recovery of the United States of America as an integral part of the British Empire. Think about that seriously. What it means is that all our political leaders, businessmen, thinkers, inventors, industrialists are just the puppets to a system they might not even know. There is not even one politician who has power or control or who can do something for us, the masses. Because the secret societies Many of them, but especially the ones that were set up by Sister John Rhodes, have a plan for a new world arrangement, so-called new world order. The secret society, which has perhaps passed on over because it is not the subject matter of conventional biography. It has instead been uh, categorized as a conspiracy theory. So many people, I've seen a lot of people dismissing it, ah, this conspiracy theory, ah, this. But when you ask them a few questions, they can't answer. They cannot use political science or economics or current affairs or news or anything to really answer the questions that you can ask. Georgetown University professor 
is Professor Carol Quigley described what he called the round table groups, which were essentially the same secret society of shoots off, founded in 1891 by Sister John Rhodes and the late uh, Lord Alfred Milner in his book Tragedy and Hope. The round table founded in 1910 and largely supported by Sir Abe Abel Mass Money. In 1919, they founded the Royal Institute of International Affairs Charter Mouse, for which the chief financial supporters were Sir Abe Bailey and the Astor family, as well as the Rothschild. There is the ethics ruling system, the round table. If you understand how this operates, if you understand the members and the people that are in these groups and organizations, you are pretty much smarter than the majority that line up and cast their votes to vote for an MP, to vote even for the president, because you are simply wasting your time. The Rhodes Trust in 1902 went on to create a new technocratic elite to manage the emergence of the new British Empire and to crush the emergence of American-inspired nationalism globally. We cannot talk about nationalism for African countries because their nationalism is a stupidity because they base it on the Berlin borders that our ancestors never participated in their crafting. So if you support something that was crafted somewhere by people who don't care about you, who have an agenda that is different from you, by 1919, the Round Table Movement changed its name to the Royal Institute of International Affairs, Akachata Mouse, with the Round Table name relegated to its geopolitical periodical. In Canada and Australia, branches were created in 1928 under the rubrics of Canadian and Australian Institute for International Affairs. However, in the United States, where knowledge of the British Empire's subversive role was widely known, the name American Institute of International Affairs was never used. It was too delicate. Instead, they adopted this name, Council on Foreign Relations, which was chartered in 1921, CFR. This is where all the technocrats who run the American government behind the two-party political system are drawn from. Just check it out, Google it out, go and search it. So when Sister John Ross says to be born English is to win a first prize in the lottery of life, he meant it and he achieved it. I wish I could say to be born Bantu is to win first prize in the lottery of life. I say that. I wish I could say that as a committee Bur Ethics Marifa Development Organization member. Why? Because we need to establish something greater and something more powerful than what C. John Roth is. We have it. It is our story. It is what Hamid Ibur Ethics continues to propagate every time. That's why we say connect with us. How uh, is this hope and knowledge and this knowledge help us? What can we do in the face of such information when we are facing the toughest challenge ever? Our ancestors surrendered and saluted the colonizers. What about you and me? Can you brainstorm? What do you think you can do? For us, we have identified the problem. We have identified the origins of the problem. We have given the details of the problem, when it happened, how it happened, where it happened. The consequences is mind and spiritual control and servitude, suffering and poverty, wars, and all the mayhems that you can have today. What we need to do after analyzing this problem like this is to find the solution. Shoot us an email in response to this at join at marifado.com and the solution is the Bantu Ank Nehast. That's where we will find our Solutions. Subscribe to our channel, Committee Buru Ethics. This is preacher by LM Tumizulu saying, Tatenda Siabonga Enkos.